Alright everyone, welcome back. If you saw my last video that I posted, it was the complete teardown, inspection, and rebuild of this Sherman transmission that's sitting here, right here in front of me. I'm now going to be able to install it into the 1948 Ford Aiden that's right behind me. That's going to require me to split this tractor in half and to drill uh, a hole in the side of the bell housing in order for this shifter lever to fit out through, among many other things as well. So if you want to just see how a Ford 8 n tractor is split, I know that comes up a lot in uh, discussion groups online, what's involved, how hard is it, this video will give you a great opportunity to uh, watch that uh, take place. So I'm excited about this, I hope you are, so let's just dive right in. As you go through life, you'll realize that there are multiple ways to perform one task. Splitting a tractor is no different. Everybody kind of has their own ways of doing things with what they got. Uh, I'm going to show you what, the way I like to do it, what I've, works best for me, the way I feel the safest way. Um, you do you, I'll do me. The only thing I can suggest is please, please be careful. This is not a heavy tractor by any means. They're only like around 2,500 pounds with no extra added weight. But if any of that 2,500 pounds were to land on you, I guarantee you it's going to ruin your day. Your manual for an 8N, when you split an 8N, you have two options. You can leave your hood on or you could take it off. I personally like to take it off. I know a lot of guys are going to disagree with me because you can save some time by leaving it on. Uh, you don't have to disconnect your wires or take your steering wheel off and things like that. But for the extra 15 minutes or so that it takes, uh, I have my reasons why I don't like leaving the hood on. Uh, I won't waste time in the video explaining why. Um, a lot of guys say, well, I don't need help taking the hood off. These things are pretty heavy. Uh, I have my own way of taking the hood off by myself. You're just going to see here in just a second. You can easily forget to unhook your lights if you have any. So you want to make sure you unhook the wire. You don't want to rip them off. Also, you don't want to uh, forget to unhook your fuel line. Uh, you don't want to bend the line. And then also it can do damage to your settlement bowl. Uh, other than that, you want to take the radiator cap off. Uh, the two bottom bolts uh, for the hood that are below like the radiator area. Uh, your grill might come out, sometimes they stay in. Uh, also, there's four bolts on the dash that need to be removed. Um, you also want to take the little grill and the grill screen on the side of the hood off that goes into the uh, oil bath. The steering wheel, technically you don't have to take it off. You can work the hood around it, but I highly suggest if you can take it off. It makes life a lot easier and we're just going to lift it straight up make sure everything's cleared and you don't uh, do any damage to the radiator neck or the settlement bowl or anything else for that matter The engine hoist really makes things a lot easier. I did fail to mention uh, it's always easier if you take the gas out, drain it out good. Uh, so now you can see all the wires. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on all this, but all the wires got to come off and we can just kind of flop it on the engine here. Uh, this is where it's going to be split right here. Generally, if you were just doing a clutch or uh, you know input shaft seal or something, you could leave the steering gearbox on and in place. The only thing you'd have to do is remove those two bolts right here and then you could uh, split the tractor. But since this has got to come off for the Sherman installation, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, I can leave the oil bath on, the tray, the dash, and the box is all going to come off uh, in one. I will also have to disconnect the uh, steering arms here as well. On the left side of the engine, as you can see, I already took the exhaust off, took the uh, tube from the oil bath to the carburetors off, disconnect the throttle linkage, I will have to disconnect the oil line here going up to the oil gauge, that has to come off. Um, other than that, we're almost ready to split. Okay, you saw me remove the uh, steering arm and the radius arm. They can be kind of 
uh, stubborn at times. It might take some PB Blaster, WD-40, uh, some ambition, uh, but they'll come off. I also went ahead and disconnected the uh, clutch lever or the clutch linkage. Uh, basically, everything's ready to go. I do want to point out this right here. I have two wooden wedges on either side of the axle. That is very crucial. You got to have something under there, or when you go to split, the tractor will want to, or I'm sorry, the engine will want to rotate to the one side or flop over. You want this to stay stationary. Like I said before, uh, you know, there's several different ways you can do this. Uh, some people like to take away the the uh, engine and leave the back stationary. Some people like me like to keep the uh, engine stationary and move the back. I'm sure you noticed um, these trailer jacks. These work out uh, really well. A lot of people will use a floor jack underneath there and wheel it back. I've done that before. I mean it works but uh, these are so much safer, easier. You don't have to worry about uh, a, jack stand, or a floor jack slipping or accidentally going down causing a little catastrophe. Uh, these things will work on several makes and models of tractors. I mean this ain't just for this tractor. Sometimes you might have to make uh, a different bracket for whatever you're working on. Uh, takes, you know, really didn't take that long to do and it's just so much easier. I would not recommend uh, getting anything too light duty. These are 3,500 pounds. I have one on each side. You probably don't even need that much. It's a little overkill, but I have them, so I'm going to use them. But uh, I could probably get away with just one. There is quite a bit of weight, you know, when you split right here. There's a good bit of uh, leverage hanging down on it, so you don't want anything flimsy. I also got the uh, bottle jack down here. That's just underneath the oil pan with a little bit of pressure. I'm going to go ahead and remove these bolts. These jacks got some tension on them. And I was going to take the steering box off first, but I'll give you a visual of what it looks like if you're just doing a clutch job or something. You would just leave that on there. I'll ta take that off once the tractor is split. I went ahead and removed all eight bolts uh, holding the transmission and the uh, engine together. And with just a little bit of rocking of the back tire, you can see there's about a quarter inch gap here already. That means that there's no binding on the input shaft and we're ready to just pull this uh, rear end away from the uh, rest of the tractor. And there it is two pieces pretty easy uh, one person can do it uh, just for those who are, aren't familiar with these tractors maybe just getting into the hobby or something uh, here's your clutch your uh, pressure plate your uh, friction disc down here this is where your input shaft goes into this is actually your starter bendix right here and then here's your uh, ring gear back here that's what the uh, starter Bendix uh, engages to, turns your engine over. These sometimes get chewed up pretty good and need replaced. Uh, this one looks pretty good, thank goodness. Normally if I'd split a tractor I would just go ahead and uh, replace everything. But uh, this tractor is a work in progress. So we rescued it from a neighbor friend down over the hill. Sat outside for about 12 years. About every winter I do something to it. I've had the rear end apart, the whole hydraulics rebuilt, everything. Uh, I have yet to uh, split it in this part of it. But uh, normally, like I said, I would go ahead and replace that. But eventually I'm going to just freshen up the engine and I'll uh, do that at that time. Uh, it doesn't slip or anything. Works good. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Here's the other half. Looking into the uh, bell housing. That is your throw out bearing right there. I will be replacing that and it will actually be on the Sherman transmission. Uh, that is the input shaft. All that is coming out. The Sherman's going to fit right inside there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove 
that steering uh, gearbox. Now we can get a little better look now that that's gone. We can look right down into the, you see your input shaft, this is just the housing here. You see your springs are connected that go to the throw out bearing. This is all going to be removed and the Sherman transmission is going to take its place. And if you're wondering what the original red Ford looks like, right there, never seen the sun. Next you'll want to remove uh, the little key here. This is for the uh, left brake pedal. I already had that removed because of my um, jack stands that I have on here. It was in the way uh, and I also removed the uh, running board obviously. But uh, you want to put that in a safe place and you'll want to push that the whole way through. Now that the shaft is gone, you can see we have a lot more room to work with. Uh, I took the clutch pedal off too, and that will allow this to uh, flop forward and give you some more room too, but this should be able to stay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean all that up. I don't know if you can see in there, a lot of times everybody always asks what that carter pin is hanging from the uh, underside of their tractor. That is to keep a hole open. If you have any leakage from any of these parts, the oil will exit the tractor and not fill up this whole uh, bell housing and cause a mess and get all over your clutch. So that is the purpose of that little pin. If you saw my first video when I rebuilt this, I mentioned that I did not put a gasket here on the input shaft or the top cover there. I have to take this off, both pieces off, in order to set the bearing preload. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, take that off. Um, it's actually pretty nice too. Uh, this whole thing's about 45 pounds, so it makes it a lot easier getting it in and out. This is your mounting plate. That's what actually goes in first. The mounting plate then you can bolt the transmission to it. However, your shims, these are all your shims, these are in different thicknesses. Uh, we'll see how many we need here in just a moment. But that's all going to go in first. That is bolted down by these four cap screws. They countersink into these holes. Once you get that tight, there is a gasket that goes between the mounting plate and the transmission. That gasket is uh, 164 thick. Do not use anything thicker because it will mess up your bearing preload adjustment. So the best way I can describe this bearing adjustment is this way. When you go to bolt that transmission in, it's going to want to naturally draw itself inward. If you have no shims, that bearing will go into that gear really, really tight and you won't be able to even turn it. So basically these shims are just like spacers to prevent that transmission from going in too much. This is kind of a tedious process. Once you put that, I'm just gonna put a random shim in there, put it in there, bolt it up, bolt the transmission in, check to see if I can turn the shaft by hand with just the finger and a thumb. If it's too tight, I will need to add more shims to bring it out and relieve the pressure uh, from the bearing inside that gear. I have to take it in and out a few times until I just get it right. It's kind of a pain, so just take your time. Uh, every time you have to change a shim, add or take away, you will have to unbolt the transmission from the plate 
and then unbolt the plate from the tractor, put more or less shims on, bolt it back up, and then you'll have to bolt the uh, transmission up. Again, rotate it, see how it feels. If you can turn it by just your two fingers and don't have too much play up and down, I'd say it's good to go. Uh, the manual says seven thousandths play. It's kind of hard to get an accurate uh, reading with when in this situation. So uh, you always want to be right on or a little bit more loose. You don't want to be too tight. Uh, that will only uh, destroy your bearing pretty quick. I have found that once you have those bolts in there just barely finger tight lift up on the bottom it actually moves a little bit and believe it or not uh, you'll have a hard time getting that transmission in there it actually creates like a little bit of a, a lip there but lifting up and then tighten them enough to where it don't move uh, will solve that problem and then I'll go ahead and just uh, tighten them real good With it all bolted up, I'm going to go ahead in here and try to, ah, it's very tight, no surprise, I only have one shim, it's like 20 thousandths, so I'm going to take everything back apart, add a shim or two, and go through this process again. Well guys, we got big problems here. <laughs> uh, after that last scene where I was putting the shim in, I took the transmission out and added two more shims and I was happy with how things felt however I was not happy with the way things sounded if you saw my last video that I posted I completely rebuilt this I bought a brand spanking new output shaft why is it in my hand <laughs> well the teeth on this shaft just do not mesh well with the gear in the transmission of the tractor. When I was rotated, all I heard was clunk, 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 clunk. Sounded terrible. I can imagine what it would sound like if you actually were running the tractor. Uh, I think everybody in a mile radius would hear you. And obviously, I, I honestly don't think you'd really go too far. I think the, the gears, it sounded so awful, I think they would just self-destruct after a while. You've heard my frustrations before about reproduction parts. Well, there's another one I can add to the list. Uh, however, in my last uh, video about this, I was just being really picky. Um, right here is the high gear, and that rides right about here. They are known to get some wear right there. And it only had like maybe a thousandth to two thousandths uh, wear more than what I'd like to see. Um, that's why I replaced it and uh, you know I figured hey I'll just go all out it's available won't ever have to worry about it the funny thing is after I measure this compared to the old one I really only gained about a thousandth <laughs> on that so the old ones back in I actually already had it in the tractor I shimmed it just to make sure it sounds great um, I don't think I'm gonna have a problem I guess that was 
I was just being too picky and I probably should have never bought that but with any project you always have problems um, you know you guys that restore the tractors like me or anybody that builds street rods or whatever you always have those days where you know things just don't work out uh, I always say some days you're the windshield some days you're the bug well today I was the bug but we turned that frown upside down and we're gonna keep digging so let's keep digging okay we're back on track after that uh, issue that we had here but I went ahead and put uh, three shims in that's what uh, feels good to me uh, again here's your plate right here here's your transmission those shims are behind the plate here right at the uh, where my pencil point is um, with those three shims I think there was a twenty thousandth a twelve thousandth and a five thousandth and I can just grab it and easily turn it I'm actually turning all the gears in the other transmission as well there's very little to no movement on the shaft so I think we're really good there with all that trouble I was having I actually took this plate off so if you've never seen the inside of the uh, 8 in transmission there it is there's the gear right there of the Sherman that sneaks through that's the one that was making all the noise on the old output shaft even though I got all the shims that I want I'm not done yet I'm gonna take them all back out I'm gonna make sure they're clean real good put just a little bit of uh, gasket maker or sealer on them and then I'm going to put the transmission back in and I'm going to have the uh, top cover and the gasket put on and we're going to get ready to drill a hole on that side of the bell housing. So you saw me install the gaskets, I put some gasket sealer, I made sure everything was tight, this is going to be the last time it goes in, so we want to make sure everything's perfect. Do not forget the drain plug, I had it removed because it sits in my stand easy, because if you put it in and you don't have it in, you won't be able to put it in later, so make sure that's in place. We still have the input shaft off, because uh, well, you'll see in just a little bit here why. To drill the hole for the shifter lever, we want to measure from the top here where the steering gearbox uh, bolts up, go down 2 and 7 16 and then from the back of this uh, starter housing out 5 and 3 quarters. And I have right there the X, that is where the center of the hole is going to be. The hole itself is going to be an inch and a quarter. And naturally I'm going to be using a uh, hole saw that is for metal. I'm going to pre-drill the hole though with a little bit smaller uh, bit. This is a quarter inch bit. Just in case if I feel the need that I have to move it one way or the other, I can maybe start it uh, and get it. Once I get the drill in there, I can pretty much see down through uh, 
just how good it's going to be. So now with just the drill bit, if I come along to the top here, shine a light, I don't know if you can see, the bit goes right into the center of that square shaft you see that's threaded where the uh, shifter lever goes in. So it looks like we're right on the money. The rebuild kit does come with a rubber grommet that you can put in there to keep the dust and water out. But before I put that on, I just want to put the uh, lever on just to show you how it actually shifts. I never showed this shift before because it's, it's kind of really awkward to shift when it's outside of a tractor. But now that it's bolted up, right now it is in neutral. If you can see the space here, this lever actually uh, will, will move in and out. All right, that's neutral. When you push it in and down, you can hear it lock, that's low range, and then just go straight back, that is high range. That's how that shifts. When you have it uh, in neutral, just like that, and back, you're just using the standard gears, uh, just like any other 8N. But the moment you push it in and go forward or backward, that's gonna be your low and high range. This will be a 12 speed now and 3 reverse. Before I go ahead and put the input shaft on, I want to remember to put that thrust washer on and these needle bearings right here. I also, very crucial, I want to go ahead and squirt some oil. I want to get it as full as I can, naturally, uh, so it doesn't. I don't want it to run out. But um, it'll be a while before the oil gets circulated in here, so I want to help it out. There's a misconception that these sometimes uh, maintain their own oil. That's not true. It does get oil from the, the tractor. Uh, there's that slinger on the back of the output shaft that just kind of helps uh, things go in and out. And with the continual churning of the gears, you basically just kind of uh, continually have oil coming and going. But it is true that you cannot drain these uh, when you're changing the... Uh, gear and hydraulic oil. Uh, there is a drain plug, but you'd have to completely remove the Sherman out of the tractor. And you also want to remember to use the same oil that you have in the tractor. Put the new gasket on with some gasket sealer. Uh, also, there is a slot down here. You want that facing down in case there's any oil that drips out. And we're ready to put this in. Might have to jiggle the gears a little bit. Right in. You saw me put the uh, new throw out bearing on the carrier here. You want to flip this fork up, make sure that's behind the throw out bearing. And make sure you grease everything really good. The fork, um, the part where it slides, you can even grease the um, shaft down here. And then, then I'm going to grab 
the springs. The little hook or a short hook goes to the back on the transmission and then the long one goes to the uh, throw out bearing. Well, I hope you enjoyed my little uh, test drive there. I apologize, I don't have a GoPro or any fancy way to hold the camera on the tractor. I was just kind of holding the camera in my hand there and I didn't want to take too much and drop it, but um, it's fast. Um, generally, these tractors will go around eh, 14, 15 mile an hour uh, normally. Um, I got up to, according to my GPS here, top speed of 21 mile an hour. Uh, I do have straight 90 weight gear oil on this tractor and I know that's going to bog it down some. Uh, it should get up to about 25. Um, it feels like I'm going about 45 <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, that is the proof right there. This GPS is pretty accurate. So uh, anyhow, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that little project. Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, click on that like button, subscribe button, and click on that little bell for any future updates. And I'm going to call this project done.